Sister Christine. Come, everybody say, God bless Sister Christine. Thank you, Father, that you have our address. You know the need of each heart, each mind, each spirit today. And I'm thanking you in advance for helping me to deliver what you have given. I'm also saying thank you for what you're going to do, Lord, in the hearts and lives of individuals today. Today is not a happy day for everybody. And so as a result, Father, you've given a very specific word. And I just say thank you, thank you for the privilege to share it. May it be done under the power of the anointing. Because words are not enough. Praise God. Lord, in the beginning, the spirit of the Lord hovered. And then you spoke. Ooh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And things were created. So in this moment, Lord God, we're asking for the spirit of the Lord to hover. Hallelujah the anointing to follow so that when the word goes forth it will create what you desire for it to create it will destroy what needs to be destroyed yes, Lord. Yes. and I just say thank you thank for you, this Jesus. release today thank you, in Jesus, Jesus name Jesus. Amen, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, we all know today is Mother's Day and, and no doubt you know your anticipation was that when you got here today, there would be a beautiful message about mothers. <laughs> That's not what the Lord has given. Praise God. Good. So I'm going to deliver what the Lord has Amen. given. Amen. 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 When I asked him, you know, Lord, what is the word for Brockville? Mm. All I kept hearing is, what happens when? Mm. Good. What happens when? Mm. Said a different way. Dealing with disappointment. Good. Dealing with disappointment. Mm. I'm going to start with Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. Hallelujah. And this is from the English Standard Version. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Praise God. And so I say to you today, whether you are a male or a female, how many of you have had life go exactly as you planned. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> In some cases, if you're like me, you didn't really have a plan. Yeah. I was not somebody that, you know, as a child or a teenager had lofty dreams of when I get older, I'm going to do this or that. I just kind of, as life came my way, it unfolded. Yeah. And the only thing I knew beyond high school was I wanted to go to Bible college. Beyond that, I didn't know 
anything else as it related to you know who I would marry, how many children, what I would do. As life unfolded, that's how I knew what the plan of God was. Sure. But for some, you've got some that you've, you know, sorry, I'm gonna back up. In some cases, we, we don't, didn't really have a plan, so we just allowed it life to unfold. But I believe all of us could confidently say it hasn't gone as planned. Sure. And I say Amen. this morning, should that surprise you? Mm. Did the morning go as planned? <laughs> so if the morning didn't go as planned, it's pretty hard to determine how life is going to pan out. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe there was a certain career path, maybe a particular college or university, or maybe you just wanted to settle down, get married and have children and live happily ever after. Mm. And I just want to say something here. When we stand at the altar, we say for better or for worse. Mm. <laughs> but in reality, we do believe that we'll be happy ever after. Yeah. Yeah. When you're looking into his eyes and he's in that tuxedo and she's <laughs> in that gorgeous wedding dress and everything yeah. in that, that day appears to be perfect, you're not thinking for worse. No. <laughs> it's, yeah. we're gonna ride away and yeah. be, you know, a horse and buggy and live happily ever after. But interestingly enough, Ruth Graham, the wife of evangelist Hilly Graham, said, a happy marriage is a union of two good forgivers. That's good. Yeah. I'm gonna say it again. Yeah. And I want you to note who said it. Ruth Graham, married to Jesus' son, in our image. You know what I'm saying? Billy Graham was, you know, the epitome yeah. of the evangelist, the yes. husband, the father. And for her to say, yes. married to Billy Graham, she said, marriage is a union of two good forgivers. Why did she say that? Mm. She said it because there are disappointments. Yes, yes. There are disappointments. Sure. It is not happily ever after. And so another thing, and this is to help our men out. Okay, I'm just gonna say this. Mm. She also said it is a foolish woman who expects her husband to be to her that which only Jesus Christ yes. himself can be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Always ready to forgive. Totally understand. <laughs> Unendingly patient. Invariably tender and loving. Unfailing in every area. Anticipating every need and making more than adequate provision. Such expectations put a man under impossible strain. Mm. So ladies, don't expect from your husband what only God is oh, capable God. of doing. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm gonna repeat it, man, I'm in your corner. Man, I'm in your corner, okay? <laughs> don't expect your husband, don't expect from your husband what only God is capable yeah. of doing. Your husband is not responsible for your joy factor. That's good. Okay? Yes. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so I say to the ladies, relieve your husband from that pressure. Mm -hmm. We're going to turn to the scriptures to identify some mothers who experienced great disappointment. Mm -hmm. Sure. We're going to begin at the very beginning with Eve. Eve experienced the death of her son, yes. Yes. not at the hands of a stranger, but of someone she also gave birth to. Yes, that's right. Amen. And I want to say to parents today, please be aware that as a parent, you are not responsible for the outcome. That's good. You're responsible for the input. That's good. So when you're raising your children, as we've already talked about, you can't determine how this is all going to unfold. Amen. Amen. So please be aware that as a parent, you are responsible for the input, not the outcome. That's good. And I want to say to somebody today, please do not carry the guilt or the burden yes, yes. concerning the outcome of your child or children Amen. if you did your part and took the time to impart. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise 
when they were under your roof, you did what it took to yes. make sure that they would be honorable citizens sure. and people that would come to love God and know God. And they've chosen a different direction. I want you to be delivered from that guilt or that burden Hallelujah. today because yeah. your responsibility as the parent was the input, not the outcome. That's good. Hallelujah. Good. The next person that we're going to look at is Naomi. And Naomi suffered the loss of her husband and two sons. Yes, she did. And then in the midst of her sorrow, Naomi called herself Mara. You notice that? No one else called her that. She called herself that. And Mara means bitterness. Yes. But the name she'd been given means pleasantness. Yes. So I say to somebody today, don't allow your circumstance to remain you. That's good. That's good. Because in time, pleasantness came out of great bitterness. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in the midst of her sorrow, Naomi called herself Mara, which means bitterness. Yes. But her name actually was pleasantness. Oh, praise God. And I say to somebody today, don't allow your circumstance to rename you. Good. Because in time, pleasantness came out of great bitterness. Oh, praise God. What do I mean by that? Naomi became the grandmother of Obed, and yes. the word Obed means worshiper, mm. who was the father of Jesse, yes. the grandfather of David, Hallelujah. and he's named of one of Jesus' ancestors in the genealogy yes, yes. recorded in the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. Praise so God. again, what was something very bitter at the time, mm. God was able to bring great oh, presence out of it. The next person that I want us to look at, and again, I'm trying to show to you individuals in Scripture that went through incredible disappointments. Yes, they did. Yes, yes. And guess what, ladies? They had feelings. They weren't. Right. They weren't these heroes that just walked through this and oh well, you know. Next, <laughs> whatever we experience when we go through something that's difficult, that's what they also yes. encountered. Amen. We're all human. Amen. We came from the same source. Amen. Eve is our mother. Yes, yes. So we all have the same feelings. And so Hannah experienced barrenness. Yes, she did. Yes. And the scorn of the other woman yeah. mm. in church. Yeah. <laughs> you say it. Hannah experienced barrenness and the scorn of the other woman in church. Yes, yes she did. Yes. But guess what? Hannah did not take out on God mm. how she was treated by the other woman who also was a church goer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hannah remained faithful to her God, yes. the house of God, to prayer and believing God for a change. Yes, yes. And so I say to somebody today, you may have, have you may have church hurt. Sure. There may be something that has happened, whether it's present or past, mm -hmm. that has happened in the realm of ministry, the yes. realm of church. Yes. I'm saying to you, don't stop doing what you know Hallelujah. to do. Hallelujah. Don't take out on God Hallelujah. what someone else did. Yes, yes. God didn't hurt you. God didn't lie about you. God didn't laugh at you. Yes, yes. So what you know to do, you keep doing. Yes, yes. The next lady is Job's wife. And I know she gets a lot. <laughs> Of negative publicity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I want you yeah. to think about it. Yeah. Job's wife lost her home. Yes. yes. It wasn't just Job that lost his home. Right. Job's wife lost her home. She lost her children, and I believe if the if I remember accurately, it was ten. Yes. And then temporarily lost her husband mm -hmm. and his livelihood. Sometimes we don't know the backstory yeah. on why things are happening. Yes, right. And in Job's yes. case and in his wife's case, they had no idea they were being targeted because of how perfect they were. Yes. They didn't know that. Mm. We know that because we, we have the script. We're now able to read about it, and we yes. know what took conversation took place in the presence of God. Mm. Yes. yes. So sometimes, and I want to say this to somebody, you may be going through something, and you may think of something you've done, Something you've not done, mm. you don't know the backstory. Amen. Right. Amen. And so sometimes we don't know the backstory on why things are happening. But trust God anyway. Yes, yes. Oh, praise God. 
I'm going to borrow the words of a song that says, trust his heart. And it says it this way. God is too wise to be mistaken. Oh, hallelujah. God is too hallelujah. good to be unkind. Hallelujah. 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 So when you don't understand and when you don't see his plan, hallelujah. when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. Praise God. Praise I'm going to repeat it. Because you need to know your God. Hallelujah. God is too wise to be mistaken. Yes. He's too good to be unkind. Yes. So when you don't understand and when you don't see his plan, when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. Oh, praise God. Praise God. I want to speak of somebody praise else God. that you've encountered great disappointment. Praise God. Praise God. What about Mary, the mother of Jesus? As she watched as her son was crucified like a criminal. Yes, she did. Mm -hmm. If you've ever had a child that has had to go through any type of criminal trial, as a mother, your heart breaks even if the child is guilty. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine, you know this man is innocent. You know yes. this man has only done good, but you're, yet you're in view of watching him die like a criminal. Yes, yes. God chose Mary to bring forth Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But that did not preclude her from experiencing incredible grief. Praise yeah. God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus was perfect. And his mother still had to deal with disappointment. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I chose to bring these individuals to your attention for two reasons. Disappointment is not something new. Amen. Amen. Nor is it just your lot in life. Mm. Everyone experiences disappointment. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Amen. So what is disappointment? It's sadness or displeasure caused by the non-fulfillment of one's hopes mm. or expectations. Mm. It is sadness or displeasure caused by the non-fulfillment of one's hopes or expectations. Mm. All of us have encountered disappointment. Amen. Amen. And there are degrees of disappointment. Mm -hmm. Maybe you were disappointed in a purchase you made. It looked good online, but when you received it, it instead of it fitting you, it only fit your 12-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> it was disappointing, <laughs> but not life-altering. Right. Yes. Maybe we are disappointed with how our day went and how much we accomplished or failed to accomplish. Again, it may affect what we are able to check off of our to-do list, but nothing we can't make up. Yes, yes. Maybe we've been disappointed with a family member or a church member. But the disappointment I want to talk to us about is what about when we are disappointed with God? That's good. Amen. Or said a different way, we're disappointed with his decision, right. his yeah. timing. Yes. In other words, we've experienced sadness or displeasure caused by the non-fulfillment of one's hopes or expectations. Mm -hmm. This is a road we don't really like to go down. Mm -hmm. Sure. Amen. But I'm going to give you an example of someone in Scripture who was disappointed with God. We're going to go to John chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. John chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha, it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Yes. And therefore his sisters went on to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Yes. And when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, Amen. that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Amen. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, and when he heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Mm. So, let's check this setting. 
Mary and her siblings were friends of Jesus. Yes, yes. He would share a meal with them and would often stay with them in their home in Bethany. Mm. So what's our takeaways? Mm. Even people that have a very close friendship with the Lord yes. experience disappointment. Amen, amen, amen. Mary was also known as a worshiper. Yes. But she still experienced disappointment. Yes. Worshippers have disappointed. Yes. Amen. Amen. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, but that did not keep them from experiencing disappointment. Amen. Amen. Just because God loves you does not mean you will not experience disappointment. Amen. That's good. And said a different way, just because you experience disappointment doesn't mean he doesn't love you. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Don't Hallelujah. associate Hallelujah. Intention. Mm. How many of you, something may have happened with, you know, a fellow co-worker, family member, neighbor, and it was something innocent, but the, the moment that you attach intention to it, <coughs> it takes on a life of its own. Yes, sure, sure. Maybe it's a neighbor you share the driveway with and they left quickly on a particular morning and your cat was underneath their vehicle. That's where he chose to get warm. And when they dashed out, the cat's life was taken. You say, well, they never did like the cat. <laughs> They did that on purpose. They didn't even look. You understand? Yeah. You associated the, the intent yeah. sure. when it was innocent. Sure. In this case, don't associate with God. He doesn't love you. That's why you're going through what you're going through. Hallelujah. It has nothing to do with Hallelujah. 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 And the minute that you place that kind of blame, do you think you're going to rush over and have a nice conversation with your neighbor when you've come to the conclusion they've killed your cat on purpose? Yeah. It's the same with God. But yes. the minute that you begin to entertain, God doesn't really care for me. God has favorites. God doesn't love me. Doesn't care for me like he does everybody else. The minute that you associate that kind of intention, do you think you're going to rush to God and have a conversation? No. You've got your back up. And God is now your enemy, not your friend. So be careful when you make criticisms concerning how life unfolds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John chapter 11, verses 20 to 22. And then Mary, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. And then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, well, God will give it thee. So I ask you the question this morning, how did they deal with the disappointment? How did they deal with the disappointment? Guess what they did? They expressed their disappointment. Sure. Yeah. Amen. They did not pretend everything was okay. Amen. When Amen. Jesus got there, the first conversation Martha has said, or had was, God, if you had been here, this had not happened. Great. Yeah. She got it out. She yes. expressed it. Yeah. She was respectful, but she expressed it. Yes. So Mar Martha also, in addition to expressing her disappointment, she also confessed her faith in God. Mm -hmm. Now watch what happens next. John eleven thirty two. 32. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. Again, Mary expressed the same disappointment, yes. but she fell at his feet. Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I ask us today, how are we to deal with disappointment? Yeah. Yeah. Praise We're to understand that it is a part of life, yeah. Yeah. even for those who are close to God yeah. and are worshipers. Yeah. We are not exempt. Hallelujah. The second thing that we are to do is to express our disappointment. Don't pretend we are good with it if we are not. Amen. 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 And you are to express your faith in God. 
Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. Oh, praise, God. praise God. But praise then, God. And you may find this strange, but then you're going to express your trust in his decisions. Because yes, yes. faith and trust are not the same. Amen. 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 Faith is a confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. But you're going to express your trust in his decisions. Why? He has the whole picture. We don't. Oh, he God. knows what he wants to accomplish through this disappointment. Praise God. Praise God. So trust Praise is God. being okay with God's decision concerning how it happens, Hallelujah. when it happens, oh, God. as it happens, mm -hmm. and even whether or not it happens. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I'm going to share a story of something that happened a few years ago. One of our church members had, had a sister visiting from Jamaica. And on one particular Sunday, I was scheduled to minister in, in Montreal. And I had asked the church sister to take me to Montreal. And she invited the sister from Jamaica that was visiting to come along on the trip. And as we were, were driving, uh, and we got talking, her name is Tanya. Tanya began to express her desire to have a child. Mm. And uh, I found it very interesting because that day the Lord had given me a word concerning Hannah mm. and in the process of time. Yes. But that's a sign. And in the moment, I, I'm in the front passenger seat. She's in the back seat. I said, Tanya, would you be okay with me laying hands on your stomach? and pray that God would grant you the desire of your heart to have a child. Mm -hmm. And she said, yes. And when I turned, she had taken her dress and pulled it right up. And there was that belly, just that she was ready. And so I was like, whoa, okay. And so I turned, and I, I just put my hands on her belly, and I prayed. And asked the Lord to grant her the desire of her heart. I, I don't remember the prayer. I just know I prayed. I don't know how many months passed, and her sister comes to me and says, Tanya told me to tell you she's expecting. Mm -hmm. And of course, I mean, we were elated. We were just like, oh, thank you, Jesus, you've done it again, you know, and we're all waiting for um, the arrival of the child. And she was about, I think, one week from delivery and could no longer feel the child grow up. And she became concerned and, of course, goes to the hospital and uh, they let her know there was no heartbeat and that she would have to give birth to a stillborn. So, you know, on our end here on the prayer team, we're like, okay, no, no, no. If, God, if she's pregnant and God gave her this child, and he can, you know, bring this child out, this child will be alive. And when we begin to pray and to fast and believe God, and guess what? She gave birth to a stillborn child. Now, it was in that moment I realized, okay, we have faith to believe God for this miracle. Mm -hmm. Now do we have trust to believe yes. him that he's made the right decision? That's good, sister. That's, that's great. Because mm -hmm. what I mean, it's not the same. Faith is, I, I believe you. But do I trust you? When, when you go a different direction, do I trust you? Mm -hmm. Now, the good news is this. She did become pregnant again, and she's given birth to a little boy by the name of Caleb, and he's beautiful, he is well, but we don't know why the other half. That's good, sister. Right. That's but we've good. got to trust that Amen. God knew why. So, how do we deal with disappointment? Understand it's a part of life. Yeah. Express our disappointment. Express your faith in God. Express that you trust his decision. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing is, ask God to heal you from the wounds uh, of disappointment. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> praise God. Praise God. This is something that I sensed so strongly the last time I was here in Let It Worship. And if you recall, we were singing the song. Jesus saves, he still does. Yes, he does. Okay. 
He'll make of you someone new. Cleanse the sin that was. The Holy Spirit whispers, no more must you be enslaved. Just believe it, Jesus saves. And in the moment, I had spoken to you guys about the fact that there are those of us that have believed God for saving us from our sins. We, we have faith for that, and we believe him for it. But there are other things that we are living with, putting up with, taking medication for, that he also desires to free us from. And a lot of those things are there because of disappointment you have not dealt with. You've not been healed from. You've not confessed. You've not expressed to God. I was really upset with you when you took my mom at five years old. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's things you've not voiced. That's good, sister. And as a result, it has brought about health issues sure. that the medical field is going to put a name on. But in some cases, it's just disappointment that you've allowed to fester and to grow. But in Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 3, and again, Jesus quotes this when he's here on earth. He says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed and commissioned me to bring good news to the humble and afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted. To proclaim release from confinement and condemnation to the physical and spiritual captives. And freedom to prisoners. To proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance and retribution of our God to comfort all who mourn. Amen. To grant to those who mourn in Zion the following, to give them a turban instead of dust on their heads, a sign of mourning, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment, the expressive of praise instead of a disheartened spirit, so they will be called the trees of righteousness, strong and magnificent, distinguished for integrity, justice, and right standing with God. The planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. I want to say to somebody today, you don't have to live the way you live. Hallelujah. Amen. He has come to bind up the wounds of the broken heart. Praise God. But there first has to be a confession. And there needs to be an express, an expression to God that you believe that he can actually heal the wounds. That you can move past the disappointment. Some of you today, you are making your husband pay. what a man did to you when you were a child. That's good. Mm. Because you've not been healed of the hurt. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The songwriter said God wants to heal you. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise and in church circles there's a lot of Emphasis on the physical, and I am not dismissing it or dissing it. But a lot of our physical needs are because of emotional things that have not been healed. So when we say today God wants to heal you everywhere you're, you hurt, I'm not just referring to your knee. Your hand, your God wants to heal your heart. Praise God. Praise God. God wants to heal your emotions. Praise God. Praise God. God wants to heal your mind. Praise God. Praise God. God wants to heal you everywhere you hurt. Everywhere you hurt. God will see you through. 
He'll take the pain away. God shall provide for you each and every day. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I need you. I need you right away. That is the message that the Lord is sending to you today. He's watched you frightfully. He's watched you try counseling. He's tried, he's watched you try certain medications. And it hasn't worked. There are those here today that in your head, if that person that harmed you and hurt you and disappointed you so severely, they would just show up and say they're sorry. You'd be healed. Mm, probably not. You might be grateful that they finally admitted and confessed, but you wouldn't be healed. So whether that person ever comes and says, I'm sorry, touching you the way I did when you were a child. You need to be released from that. Because in some cases, the individuals that have harmed you and hurt you and violated you, abused you mentally, are now in their grave. They are coming back. But you're here. And you need to be released and healed. And so again, I say in this moment, God wants to heal you everywhere you hurt. But there's things that you've not allowed him to touch. Things you've not allowed him to be in on because you've not expressed it. It doesn't mean he doesn't know it's there. But God is not going to interfere until you invite him. And I ask you in this moment just to bow your hands. Hallelujah, Lord, I bless you. Hallelujah. I was watching a service where my eldest son is the associate pastor. And in that service, there was a time of ministry where the Lord was just speaking. And it's a large congregation, but he just spoke out. He said, there is somebody here. You are addicted to narcotics. And if you come in this very moment, God is going to relieve you, deliver you from this addiction. And when the young man came forward, he just stood about there. And Caleb looked at him and he said, at a place, where you were hurt in an extreme manner and your heart was broken. You turned to narcotics instead of turning to Jesus. But in this moment, because you've turned to Jesus, he's going to deliver you. Hallelujah. He also said that as he's asking for whoever it is that needs to come forward, he said, you can choose to have your dignity or you can choose to have your deliverance. And I'm going to say the same thing to somebody this morning. You can choose to stay where you are and be comfortable and hope God will meet you where you're at. But I'm going to open the altar. And you can choose to have dignity, or you can choose to have deliverance.
but I pray that they choose deliverance today. And if there is something that as I was speaking, that thing just was there. And you know what it is. You know who it is. You could even give me the, probably the date it happened. But today you want to be set free and inviting you to come and deal with your disappointment.